I've lived next to the Great Lakes for the majority of my life, and I've always been amazed by the fluctuations with the water levels, how they form and reform the earth around them. The magnitude and force of these bodies of water has always left me in awe. The past several years have been even more interesting with regards to what exactly these massive lakes do. To be honest, I've never given it too much thought until recently. I, as well as many people that live on and around the Great Lakes, have always concluded that the water levels rise and fall naturally in a mostly cyclical pattern which would largely be a correct assumption. But why are the Great Lakes so high right now? How do they go from record lows in 2013 to record highs in about seven years? To understand lake levels, we have to look at three components. Precipitation, evaporation, and runoff, which all add up to equal the net basin supply. Precipitation has been much higher along most of the Great Lakes basins in the past several years since the historic lows of 2013, which has obviously had a direct impact on water levels which also adds to a higher runoff into the lakes from nearby rivers, streams, wetlands, and urban water systems. We'll get back to why precipitation has been higher. But a large factor has been the drastic change in evaporation. Evaporation has as much of an impact as precipitation. This means that while we see heavy rainfalls and snow dumps, evaporation is the driving force that picks up this moisture and moves it away from the basins, or it cycles back into the system. In 2014, we experienced a very cold winter. I still recall the heating bills I paid after my wood-burning predictions fell short that year. During that cold, harsh winter driven by an increase of Arctic cold air, we witnessed a drastic drop in evaporation, as well as yearly increases in precipitation, which has led to the very quick turnaround from record low to record high. And when I say quick turnaround, what I mean is that never before in recorded history have the lake levels changed so drastically in such a short period of time. Great Lakes water levels have been officially recorded since 1918 so we have a little over 100 years of data to look at. During this period of lower evaporation and higher precipitation, the lake levels quickly started to rise and have continued to break records. In 2019, all five Great Lakes broke high-level records, and they continued to do so into 2020. Now, what I find most interesting about the current levels is the quick change, and scientists state that this is likely to become the new norm. Record highs and record lows in much shorter periods of time unlike the slower, more gradual level changes that we have been able to study thus far. At the time of writing this, we are seeing well above average levels being recorded on Lake Superior, Michigan-Huron, and Erie. So back to why precipitation has been higher. Climate change is also playing a role in the largest freshwater lakes on this planet. A warmer atmosphere is able to carry more vapors, as well as carry vapors from further away. The conversion of water to vapor and liquid to ice produces energy. More vapors equals more energy and increased atmospheric moisture, which is an explanation for more larger-scale rainfall or drenching events in the past few years. So what happens next? The U.S. Army Corps of Engineers has been able to model a few different outcomes for the upcoming year 2021, and well, if you made it this far, I'd assume you'd be interested in finding out just exactly what that is, so I'll leave a link for that in the description. But their actual forecast, above average levels heading into 2021, Nothing record-breaking for the first few months of the year, but slightly above average. For the rest, we'll just have to wait and see. I hope you enjoyed this video of the Great Lakes Water Systems, and thank you for watching.